Good evening. This is Pamela Tate Roger from the San Francisco Bay Area, and I am a travel consultant. Tonight, we are going to talk about So You Want to Start a Travel Blog, Part 2. If you were with us last week, you already know that we introduced Part 1 last week, and this week, we are going to look at platforms for starting a blog. So we're going to switch over to our new screen so that we can get started. All right, so here we go. Our first platform is Blogger. Now, um, I started recording this with a live audience earlier and for some reason, it just kind of disappeared. So we're gonna do it all over again where you all can see it today. So we're gonna pull up Blogger and we are going to start off like we are preparing a new blog. So we picked Savor the World Travel and More. So I'm gonna do Savor the World. It is also extremely late here, so I apologize for my typos. Travel two. And we are going to not necessarily assign it an address. I'm comfortable with them actually looks like i have to because i'm now doing a secondary blog so we'll do savor the world travel two and now we'll pull up at blogspot.com that is available so we're going to run with that um we're going to look at different themes so it's telling us our address is available there are multiple themes that we can choose from which are pretty awesome for right now, we're gonna do contemporary. We're gonna say create blog, and it's gonna give us a platform. At that point, we can pick layouts, we can go back through and um, pretty much do anything. I'll just say no thanks here. Um, so it's going to give us some great options. Let's look at themes. And so this is basically how it's set up. Um, this is the assumption that we're doing like a live regular blog and this is how it's going to look when you are on a um, mobile phone. So now we're going to scroll down and look at the different types of templates. I originally selected contemporary or contempo. This is what it would look like. Now we started talking last week about if you're doing this and trying to be consistent within a brand, you always want to be thinking, what are your colors in your logo? What are the colors that people identify your business as? Um, so if you have um, chartreuse green with navy blue and white, you want to kind of stick with colors that fit into that theme. You want to make sure that things are as cohesive as possible and you might even want to consider if you are working on your own website or if you have a website that's not issued by your travel company like i have my own website um savor the world travel and more um we can cite patrice abel's vance she has her own website dangerzone.com um this is my website what it looks like there is a way that you can actually incorporate a blog into your website. My website is designed by, well, designed by me on Wix.com. That's W-I-X.com. And that is the second platform we are going to be looking at in creating a blog. Um, they do integrate very well. It would stay within the same thing if I'm using or adding a blog onto this website, which I did have, but I'm currently revising my website and taking off old travel um, trip information and putting on new travel trip information. So now we're gonna head on back over to Blogger. And so this is what we were talking about where it is our um, Contempo. This was the first one that was offered to us. So we're gonna close out of that. And now we're just gonna start looking at different themes that are available. We have Soho. Um, of course, we wouldn't keep the picture of the cat because the cat doesn't look like he's traveling anywhere, right? Um, but you can totally interchange your photos. This looks very folksy and like someone might have traveled to a foreign land, maybe Greece, perhaps. This is like space travel. Ooh, do, 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 do. Um, this one is loading in, and that's more for like a fashion blogger. 
but we like to go through all of these and see what's available. This would be like a foodie, or if you were doing trips to say maybe Italy or um, someplace where food is involved, planning cuisine type trips. We're waiting for this one to load, um, unless this one doesn't have much color and it says nothing's there. So it looks like nothing else is gonna load. Um, here is a blue background. If you have something that's blue in your website, this would be a great one to kind of go with. Peach, actually this goes with, you go back to that one. This one actually feeds well into my logo. Um, my logo has, let's see if it's even on here. I said that and it dumbed me. I don't think it's actually on my website, my logo. It is the Eiffel Tower with a bistro table and a butterfly. Um, and I should probably get that added onto my lovely website unless it's on my quote form, which it might not be. Oh, that's my logo. Save for the world, travel and more. You'll notice this is kind of small, but this does actually match the color scheme of this blogger that we were just doing. Ta -da! I'll flip back and forth. This is kind of that um, peachy rose color with burgundy and a mauve color. And so we see a mauve background. That could be a great segue into blending my website, my logo, and a blog, right? So these are the things you wanna try and think about so that when someone sees that it's in the same color scheme, they think the same family and they think the same business. Okay, so we're gonna select this one. So we just simply hit apply to blog. This is gonna be our background for our blog. And I did not see that coming. It says bad request error, which is very odd because this is live, so I can't control what happens there, but it should have fed in our, our proper blog, what we just selected. So let's see if this is gonna to apply to blog. Okay, I think it's not liking my um, secondary page since we already had Save of the World Travel 1. We are in Save of the World Travel 2, and I should be able to pick a background, but for some reason, it's not letting me. So we hit customize to see if it changes anything. Okay, looks like it actually did here, which is very, odd i'm wanting it to apply and so we can actually do it and just kind of get moving with it so it's telling me select backgrounds so let's go with this theme color of backgrounds okay and apply to blog which i'm praying this works and if not we're going to go back to the original one that didn't videotape earlier because we can't spend a lot of time on here see view blog it did change which is awesome um the crazy thing for me is i don't see where i can actually type so let's go into view blog which we just did go back to blogger because now we want to actually start typing and building some content okay so this is what it looks like and we do see that that has changed so let's do our first post what we had on our first post was welcome to savor the world travel. And let's see. And we're going to say thank you for joining. And I have too many letters there. Sorry about that. This is well after I did my live taping, so I apologize for that and past my bedtime. Thank you for joining us. And what we did earlier was we added a photo. So this is where you can add a hyperlink where it can take them off to another location. We're gonna add a photo, so we're just gonna click here. We're gonna choose a file to upload. You have many choices. Um, we're just gonna take something that's already in my computer files which is Pam and the sunset in Cabo. And we're gonna click open, which is gonna load that picture up in there. You see that's working now, uploading. And bam, it's there. So now we wanna say add selected and it's gonna add the picture in there. That's awesome, right? 
And so this is our first blog post. And, you know, a blog post doesn't have to be extensive. It doesn't have to have a lot of meat to it, particularly your first one. It's just like, give them a little something, who you are, what you're doing, welcome to the page. Save it. Oh, it seems to be saving now. And we're gonna hit publish maybe. There we go. So our first one is published here. You can see it's there. And now we're gonna say new post because we wanna make more than one. The first one should always just be like, welcome, tell a little bit about yourself. And now we're gonna say my favorite place to travel is Paris, France. Ta-da! Um, if we can, we put in a picture of the Eiffel Tower, but I think I don't have a picture of an Eiffel Tower. Um, let's see, we don't have any pictures in our blog. We could try from a Google album archive, but I believe there are no pictures affiliated with this. Um, from my phone, my phone is not attached to it. My webcam is not on from a URL. I don't have a URL to use. So what we're gonna do is just kind of go in here and assume and just act like we had a picture of the Eiffel Tower because which is crazy that I don't because I absolutely love the Eiffel Tower, right? Let's see if we can get this mosque to go in. Sometimes pictures are really big, and if so, you have to adapt the pictures, like this lovely little thing you see that says the server has rejected. Ah, it's also the type of picture. They should be a JPEG, they should be a GIF file, or a ping, a PNG file. And that actually came from a website, the one that I was just trying to put in here. So we always want to make sure that we have the proper um, type of a photo. So let's go with this one and hopefully this works. And that loaded, it's a JPEG. And so we say add that selected and wow. So let's say my favorite vacation, we won't say this is Paris. Let's just be nice and call this um, Los Cabos, Mexico. And we will say save and we can do publish. And that is our second blog. Our first one was our welcome. Our second is my favorite place to travel. So now what we want to do is we've established what this is going to look like for the most part. Um, and we can go back up here using our blogger. And let's see. We want to see what does this look like. And it's odd that it's not giving me um, nothing to publish. So. Let's go here to view the blog and see what it looks like. Ta-da! Pretty cool, huh? First post. Here we go. This is the one that's telling us that it's Cabo San Lucas. It tells you to read more. I understand why my title isn't there, but it says my favorite place to travel is Los Cabos, Mexico. So we can go back. And we can also go to our very first one, which is thank you for joining us. And it will show you what we did on our first one. Now, people who are visiting here can comment, they can click share, and it'll give them the option to share it on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, or share it via email. And you can also use this to spread this message across your multiple social media platforms. By clicking Facebook, it's gonna give you the option to put it on Facebook. So this one's gonna tell me I need to log in. Actually, I was already logged in. So by posting that, this is gonna post that blog spot under my name and it would go directly into my Facebook, right? Which is pretty awesome. Um, Instagram would be the same. The same thing was, who was our third one? Pinterest, Twitter and then it will just copy the link for your email. So you can use that email link and you can actually go through your email list and just blast it out to everybody. And then when you do that, ask them to subscribe to your channel, um, to your blog, because people won't know that you have a blog when you first start off, right? And so this is your about me. We have not set this section up. So we would have our logo here or a photo. Um, this is the profile. We haven't set that up yet. 
We can edit our profile and we can do all kinds of things here. Um, you see it's Save the World Travel and all that good kind of stuff. Um, we want to set to our current email address. We want to share our profile. Your profile will not be shown if it is not shared, but we are sharing it. And so that's how we set up our initial page. Um, about me, we did not set up. You'll notice got two different blogs here, and that's because we have the Oompa blog, which is our one that we did a great job on earlier, and it didn't videotape, which is why I'm now re-recording. So this was our initial blog that I set up earlier in the evening with my live audience. I mean, if they want to do a new post on that one, they would just hit new post, and it's going to come up for them to type in that information to create a brand new post. So um, like I say, these are pretty um, self-explanatory and they are very effective and user-friendly. And so that is using Blogger to set up a new blog. I'm going to move a little faster than we did earlier in the evening, um, just so that we can kind of keep things moving because we have a second group that we're gonna look at, which is Wix. Wix, I love my um, Savor the World Travel email, excuse me, website is actually a Wix site that I created and I maintain and I update all content um, and I love it. Um, it's very user friendly. You can change out templates, you can change out photos, you can um, customize, you can pay for additions, you can take things off. It's a great tool and it's very, very easy for um, people to use. I know people who are paying monthly maintenance on websites that range anywhere from $110 up to $249 a month. And for me, that's a lot of different things that I can be doing in terms of marketing if I'm spending that type of money um, for my business. And that's just because I don't have that type of volume of sales yet. And so even though it is a 100% tax deduction, we wanna be thinking um, getting more bang for our buck. If you can do it and you enjoy things like this, I encourage you to go with Wix. It's a great program to use. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna click there where it said, let's get started. I wanna create this site for who? For myself, for a client, for a company I work for, or for someone else? This is gonna be for myself because it's for a website for me or my business. So we'll click that. Sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button there. There we go. So it should be a business, an online store, music designer. We are selecting blog. Now blog is gonna be set up very similar to a website. In fact, as I mentioned, my website actually has a link where I can add a blog. And I did have a blog, but I'm revisiting and revamping my website. So the blog is currently a hidden page until I fix it the way that I'd like it to look. So it says, it should be a blog and I've what? I've built suites professionally, excuse me, sites professionally. I've created many websites. I've built a few websites where I've never done this before. Now, again, we're assuming that people are novices. So we're gonna go on and click, I've never done this before. And what happens then is we're gonna go start now. And I probably shouldn't have done that, but if it doesn't give me what I want, the great thing is with Wix, like I say, very user-friendly, we could go backwards, but it gave me what I needed. So it says, what type of site do you want to create? So we wanna say travel, because we're gonna be travel bloggers, right? But if you're not gonna do travel, you can easily pick something else. So we're gonna say travel blog. Um, are we gonna be a travel blog and podcast? Mm, I don't know. Um, holiday travel blogger? Yeah, I don't know. Travel vlogger, meaning sometimes you'll do videos as well as a blog. I'm just going to stick with a good old travel blog and podcast. You can, ooh, or actually, I'm looking at this layout. I don't know if I like that. The great thing about Wix is you can go back. So we have travel podcast. Well, let's just go back to a simple old travel blog. And we have the option of a travel vlog. What does that look like? Hmm, let's see. So it gives you the option of setting a video if you're gonna be doing interviews or visiting sites. It'll feed into your Instagram. It'll allow people to chat with your site and to subscribe. I'm gonna go backwards. 
Because again, these are options and they're all great options. We're gonna go back to this travel blog. Why? Because I'm comfortable with just being a travel blog. Let's hit next and see what happens. Ta-da! You have a subscribe form. It does allow you to chat with people and it does give you an Instagram feed. And for me, that's perfect. Let's go. So what are we going to name this blog? Now, remember, I started off with Savor the World Travel and I'm praying we didn't save it because it did not record. So since we're redoing this, we're hoping that this is going to work. Savor the World Travel. Great. Okay, import content from an existing website or for Google Places. We're going to say skip because we don't have any of that. Review and edit. So we have Savor the World Travel. We have the email address. I had to use my other email address because Savor the World Travel is actually connected to my Savor the World Travel website. So we switched the email address. If you wish to enter a address, you can. If you wish to enter a phone number, you can because these things are going to be visible on your website. And if you have social media sites that you want to add, you can, you can just simply paste them there. So that would be like your Facebook, your IG page, Instagram page, your Pinterest page. You might do LinkedIn or you might do Twitter. So now for our logo, um, I think I do want to put my logo in there and I do believe I might have it on a disc here, which I'm hoping, I'm hoping, let's see, logo, saver, there we go. And that's going to just load in my logo. There we go. Ta-da! Logo's done. Next. And it's feeding. So here's what I like. You get to pick themes. Whichever theme you pick, you can work around. You can change it up. You can add colors. You can delete colors. I mean, it just gives you what type of feel do you want your your um, website blog to look like. So we're gonna go with bold. Even though you see yellow here, you're gonna get options. I like the boldness of that printing. And so it says what to create, you want to create a color palette from your logo. So I'm gonna say, yeah, use the colors from your logo to create a palette for your site. Let's do that. Why? Branding and marketing. We wanna make sure that everything is cohesive. We want to make sure that the colors are reflective of what we're doing. And when someone looks at our blog or our website or our logo, it has a uniform feel. And so we're going to go on and stick with these colors. And so it's, it's feeding them in. So now it's telling us to pick our favorite home page design. And I am still having issues, so I don't have on my glasses and I'm waiting for new ones. But here we go. So these are our three options. We have one, we have two, and we have three. Now we picked one the last time, but now I'm looking at one kind of going, it doesn't feel that great to me anymore. I'm really digging number two. So we're going to go on and use this design, number two. And it's going to load everything in. Like I say, it's very user friendly. Um, you see it even matched up the colors to your current logo where you didn't have to do a bunch of redesign and trying to figure things out. You simply just put your logo in and then it's going to do an automatic match. It knows proper color palettes to pull all that in. I put in bold because I wanted a bold um, type of font to kind of be reflected in a bold feel of my um, sample for my header pages. And so now it's creating those pages with my logo as well as my um, colors that I selected with the color palette. And it takes a little time for this to actually load, but when it does, you're gonna have a magnificent piece of matching uniform, um, you know, front page for your blog, which will also match with your logo as well as any of your other items that have gone through this process. And so here we are. Welcome to Savor the World Travel. 
natural curiosity. And of course, you type in whatever you want to type in there. But this is the feel of our blog. And honestly, I absolutely love it. I love the color. Um, I love the boldness of it. You can change the picture. Um, it's awesome. I love it. I absolutely love it. And so this is as quickly as it is. Look at that. That was way quicker than what we did with Blogger. Um, but I, like I say, I just love it. I wish this logo was a little bit bigger, but it's okay. It doesn't have to be because it's a blog. And the main thing is we're not um, doing our customizing the blog. Um, the the logo we're supposed to be working on the blog. So sorry, I'm trying to hit blog here and it's going to header and I don't want to change the header. Um, oh, here's a couple of things. Business name. It says the item is hidden. I don't know why, probably, could, there we go. Because we have the, um, I want it not hidden. Okay, so we have that and it's got that there. Then a tagline, do you have a tagline? I just created a tagline earlier this week that I really, really liked. And it's a little morbid, someone told me, but I just liked it. See, um, I typed it on Saturday and right now, I don't see my phone to actually get the exact wording that I did, but basically it was a paraphrase of um, take some time to see the world. And I just liked it. Savor the world. So take some time to see the world as well. And so um, we want to go down here. We've already gone through our tagline. And so we're pretty much done on the header side. So I'm going to close that. Okay. And so here, if we were going to start to actually type our, our um, blog, we would just start to work in this area. And we'd save it, we can preview it. So I'm gonna hit preview and see what that comes out as. And this is our finished look of our blog. And so every time we put in a new blog post, it's going to go here. So you would put in a photo and then you would have your header and then whatever you've typed that's going to be what's reflected in your um in your blog so that's it in terms of the blog now you have a couple of options you can keep this as a free domain site i'm using the wix free domain and it would be see your money working at website.com or either you can create your own custom domain through them or you can purchase like a GoDaddy website and then have it loaded back over to Wix. That will cost you money. And again, right now, because we're all figuring this out, we're gonna go with free. Um, you can actually change this as well. Um, to I wouldn't change it, keep it as see my money working, but you can totally change your free Wix name as well. But it will have that Wix site.com and um, the ending there. So that's it. We're going to just kind of keep it pushing. I'm going to close that up. And so that's our two platforms that we mostly are going to be talking about using. There's a third, it's WordPress. We're going to review WordPress next week. WordPress is amazing. It does amazing work for creating a blog, but it also is a great platform for creating websites. And um, they have paid, they have unpaid templates. It is just like a whole nother world. They have coding, they have not using coding, they have free, they have paid, they have premium. So that's a lesson all into itself and we are gonna tackle that next week. In the meantime, we're gonna get started and look at a couple of my favorite bloggers who blog about travel. This is Miss Gabby Beckford. I absolutely adore her. Um, she is a 24 year old based out of Washington DC area. She graduated college about a year ago, started a job, enjoyed the job and um, has been traveling since she was 17. And she did a year abroad where she got $90,000 in scholarships to go and study in the United Emirates. Um, she started off traveling right out of high school and convinced her father to allow her to go on a trip to Iceland with people she didn't know. And she was ill prepared and didn't have clothing or the appropriate things while she was on that trip. But she has learned so much. And I absolutely love her perspective on life 
I love her perspective on travel and she is doing some phenomenal things so much so that she quit her full-time job in February and now she is a paid blogger. Um, she's traveling the world. She's giving great insight. Um, she has workshops. She has all kinds of different things that are available and she loves to help um, young people learn how to travel, how to get and secure um, financial aid and scholarships for them to travel and to see the world. And so this is Gabby. Um, she did something this past week where she pulled a bunch of travel bloggers together and they created a video about the um, COVID-19 virus and just really encouraging people to stay home because travel will be there when all this is over um, and stay in place and stay safe. And so I appreciated that as well. So if you're one of my Facebook friends, um, you'll see I posted that. I believe that was just on Friday night or either Saturday when they completed the video. Um, I thought it really resonated with me um, as we are navigating this new world of travel or lack of travel. And these people travel for a living. So sitting in one place and just kind of being in a house on shelter in place is really, really difficult for them because most of us have jobs and kind of, you know, go someplace to the same place every day. These people travel the world for a living. And so I thought it was really, really apropos for them to talk about, you know, staying where you are and being well and travel will be there when this is all done. So these are some of the places that she has traveled and she gives great insights on those locations and destinations that she's been to. Um, Columbia, she went for a birthday, I guess that's been about a year ago, and wound up doing an Airbnb, which was really, really cool, um, Airbnb. And here she is up on the balcony for that at $35 US per night. Yeah, that's right, $35 US per night. And the place was quite swanky, swanky, swanky. And so, um, you know, giving insight on how to do this without going into hostels or, you know, places that are unsafe. And so I really appreciate her, her perspective on that. She talks about different types of trips, trips for youth, trips for solo travelers, trips for black travelers and budget travelers. Um, I actually was introduced to her through a um, page on Facebook called Black Travel Movement. And, um, she was one of the people that they're always talking about, you know, getting around in different places around the country and the world. And so I really, really just appreciated that. And we speak regularly um, through Facebook and I ask lots of questions and she gives lots of great insight. And I'm like, hey, if you were going here, what would you do? Um, you know, and, you know, what kind of things do this group of people do and this age group of people. She's really, really friendly and helpful. And so I really love and appreciate her. And then of course, I'm very proud. She's graduated college and now she's had this job and she's doing her own thing and actually no longer working for somebody else, but full-time working for herself. She does have a um, newsletter that you can purchase from her. It's like $14.99 a month, but she gives great tips on how to obtain scholarships for traveling. If you have students who are trying to travel the globe, um, she gives great advice as well. And now we're going to move on to another one of my favorite bloggers. And I love Miss Gloria. And I'm going to tell you a little tidbit about her and why I love her. And sorry for that little blip there. Um, she's from Fremont, California. And that's right outside of the San Francisco. And so we absolutely love our locals as well. Um, Gloria is now not traveling probably for the rest of the year, um, even prior to this virus. Um, she's got a little medical stuff going on, but she has done some glow trotting around the world and she is really, really phenomenal. She's written a book. She actually teaches webinars on um, travel blogging and monetizing your blog. Um, she goes all over the world and rarely pays for anything. When people open new hotels, they call for her and say, hey, come and check us out. And so I really appreciate that about her. And so here are some of the places she's been. This is in Lima, Peru. This one is, I believe, Jordan. I think this one was Jordan and I can't read it. Um, here she is in Cape Town, South Africa. This one, she's in Jerusalem. And here she's in the UK. And I believe this one is Cairo. She's out at the Sphinx. And this one, she's at the Taj Mahal. And here she is in Bali. 
And so she spent a lot of time in Bali in the last year. I think she went like three times last year um, doing some advertising. She has learned how to do her photography. Most of the photography done is her um, with tripods and just learning trial and error and angles. And um, she does a really, really phenomenal job. And so it's called The Blog Abroad. And um, again, phenomenal work that she does. Um, she provides lots of travel resources and just really, really good information for like um, expats, people who are traveling to different countries, how not to be an obnoxious American. Um, of course, people who are of African-American descent do travel differently than other groups of people. Um, part of it is because people see us in some countries and have never experienced an African-American person. I've experienced that personally in Seoul, South Korea. I'm um, in Asian countries. There are not a lot of African-Americans unless they're on um, travel bases, Air Force bases, Army bases. And so when they see you out, they're kind of like, wow, there's a fascination with your hair. There's a fascination with your skin color. And so um, we do experience travel differently than other cultures. Um, we also experience things different here, even in the United States. So that's also to be expected when traveling abroad. And she does speak to that, which I really appreciate because it does give you insight on things to expect and not to be offended about. But, you know, people should not be touching your person. And so if you find that offensive, at least you've been forewarned that some countries just feel like they're obligated and like they can touch you, just like they walk up and rub the stomach of Buddha. So it's just good to kind of get that perspective perspective from someone who has been doing travel. And so that is her blog, the blog abroad. And so again, we try and keep these down to 30 minutes. And so we're going to stick with our 30 minute timeline. Um, I appreciate everybody being on here. And so if you watched earlier tonight live and came back on to see this on my YouTube channel, it does look different. Um, it did not record. And I wanted to make sure that people, um, you know, got to see the steps that we were taking and what we reviewed in order to go on, move on to So You Want to Be a Travel Blogger Part 3 next week. So again, I'm Pamela Tate Roger. I am a travel consultant in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm Save of the World Travel and more. If you are friends with me, I'm Pamela Tate Roger on Facebook, and I am also Save of the World Travel as a group on Facebook, as well as Instagram. And I thank you for joining me this evening. I look forward to having you next week and, you know, enjoy this stay at home process. I hope that you are planning lots of trips for the future. And again, I'm looking forward to travel blogging with each and every one of you. Again, thank you for being with me tonight. And this webinar is officially over.